Hi, Bloody Recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a horror movie, post-mortem. Keep your eyes open and stay focused. 1918, World War I. After another battle, dumping bodies into a mass grave, one soldier called by Tomas begins to cough as another body falls on him, and a sullen soldier just observes. While the other soldiers are finishing their cigarettes, a soldier at the mass grave pulls a guy out and asks if it hurts badly, because a shell exploded next to him. Six months later, there is a speaker on the stage of the fair, the same man who pulled the guy out of the grave. He advertises the services of a guy who's been to the other side, and for just a few coins, he will tell them where their loved ones go after the long journey of life. After the performance is over, the girl sees a photo on the booth with the caption post-mortem photo. In a tent nearby, Tomas adjusts the girl's body while the parents sitting next to her say she's beautiful. And they tell Tomas that the Spanish flu epidemic has decimated entire villages, and in their village only the father and daughter are sick. Tomas tells him that he is lucky, to which the father replies that it is not luck, but misery. The girl enters the tent, where in one of the rooms, the speaker from the stage continues his closed speech, scaring the audience. And in the other room, they take pictures. When the girl's head falls on her shoulder, Tomas comes out and sees the girl, and she asks, does he take pictures of the dead? Yes, Tomas answers. She says she has a lot of dead people in her village and even ghosts. Does he want to come take pictures? To which he answers, if they pay, then yes. The tent swings open and the girl says she has to go. And when she leaves and turns around, Tomas sees her as the one from the dream before he died in the war. The two men are talking at the photo booth, eager to take pictures with their dead relatives. But they are from another village. They can't bring all their deceased relatives here. Thomas hears that and sees the girl again. He is going on a trip to the village. On the way to the village, the villagers tell stories about their relatives and that the bodies should already have been buried. One of the villagers asks what the photographer's name is, Tomas, and the girl mocks him as Tomas. The village is empty, not a soul. A man with a sack on his head, corpses in the barn. Upon arriving at the church, unloading from the cart, the girl is called Anna. She runs up to her aunt in a wheelchair and rolls her into the house. Residents look at Thomas through the windows. They go into the yards and ask the children not to look. A dog starts barking at him, but one of the residents he knows chases it away and calls him after him. In the village again, people are standing around with bags over their heads. Approaching one of the houses, the resident says that Thomas will live here for a couple of days. Mark lets them into the house. Standing outside, Thomas notices a dog playing with someone invisible. He notices Anna and asks if he can go with her, and she says let him go if he is not afraid of the dead. They arrive at the cemetery, talking about the dead. Thomas sits down to have a smoke. Anna frightens him by jumping out from behind a tree and telling him that she too had been smoking with a friend from the front. They return home. At night, Thomas wakes up to strange sounds outside and an open window, closing it. The door opens by itself. When he lies down again, he hears a sound outside the door and decides to go out, walking up to his mistress's room. She is asleep and suddenly someone is running very fast in the attic. Checking the attic his light goes out. Relighting, he goes up to the attic one more time. There is no one there. As he is about to leave, he sees that the ladder is on the floor. He jumps off and the attic closes behind him. Thomas returns to the room and props up the door. As he falls asleep, a material shadow appears above him, examining him. When he wakes up the next morning, his landlady is waiting for him in the kitchen. He says it was noisy last night. Are you afraid of the dark? Answers the landlady. A resident comes to pick up Thomas to prepare for photographs. In the resident's house a shadow follows Thomas along the wall. The landlord invites him to spread out and get ready. While the camera is being set up a closet opens and the guys with the body come into the house. Thomas asks is it the sister? It's the brother. They brought the sister in yesterday she's outside the door. Thomas doesn't even notice her. After opening her face, the owner walks in. After saying goodbye to his sister again, he asks is it correct? Thomas shows him an album of his work and he agrees. As Thomas edits his brother's body, flexing his arms and legs, he stares at his face and his brother's fingers move. After taking some bodies and pictures, Anna comes in and says she saw what he was doing at the fair and he lets her in. Anna tells him that she was born dead. She was strangled by an umbilical cord and her aunt rubbed her until she came back to life. As she is telling this, a body rises in the background and lies down again. Strange noises come from the stove several times. 
Anna says she has to go and leaves. Thomas decides to follow her home and peeks at how she feeds her aunt. While processing the photos, the same shadow appears in one photo. Having processed all the pictures there is this shadow on all of them. He takes test pictures and tries to touch this invisible shadow. As suddenly there are women screaming outside, they are running somewhere. Thomas walks out of the house, and his body is shedding a tear. There is a fire in a house nearby. They break down the door and go inside the house. The fireplace is abandoned with furniture, and the legs of the lady of the house stick out of the chimney. They break the wall to give her oxygen, but it's too late. The walls are doused with water and the housewife is dragged outside. Looking at pictures from the burning house, Thomas sees the shadow again. He goes into the room with the body and asks what they want, and chaos ensues. As Anna runs out of the house, Thomas catches up with her and calms her down. Anna is angry with him that it is all his fault, as the spirits have not touched anyone before. She tells him to leave the village. Thomas says he will take her with him, but Anna refuses and says that her home is here. Back at the landlady's house, he shows her the photo, the chair moves away, the mistress asks him to leave, he makes things worse. At night, something flips Thomas from his stomach to his back, lifting him into the air and twisting him around. He decides to leave right away. At night, Anna peeks at him through the window and hides. Thomas rides his horse up to the house for one last look at Anna's house and rushes off. Anna runs outside and shouts to Thomas, but he can no longer hear. As he lies in camp, looking at shadow photos, he hears Anna's voice calling to him from the woods. He sees Anna walking along the shore. She rises into the air and spins. She screams and Thomas wakes up. In the morning he returns to Anna and promises to help them. Thomas and Anna interview one resident. She says that at night she saw someone running across the roof and the ladder, which has been in the attic for God knows how many years, suddenly lay on the floor. A second woman comes in and tells me that one night while she was sleeping, some creature grabbed her leg, her arm without a bone, cold, and in the morning the walls were all moldy, as if rotten through. Anna and Thomas notice an open attic outside. They climb up there and see a broken chimney and a bloodstain. They hear a pitiful scream and the house begins to rattle. Thomas and Anna escape from the attic. When the next resident arrives, she tells him that she worked for a judge and that his wife liked to summon ghosts. One day her husband fell ill, they called a priest, but he could not help. The wife summoned the spirits and asked them not to take her husband. When everyone saw that he was about to give up the spirit, he survived. But the ghosts did not leave, they beat the dishes in the house and even once threw the maid down the stairs. It was only when her husband died that they left. They don't like to be talked about, but she has been hearing their moans for months. When they arrive at the next hostess, she tells him that her husband was sitting in the same chair, and as she was coming out of the basement, something whistled, and her husband's head was pressed into his body and water was running everywhere on the walls. He asks to see the basement, and the landlady thanks him for the photo. In the basement, Thomas asks if anyone is here and he hears a sound from the other corner. He lights up and there is no one there. As they begin to walk out, a shadow appears from the corner of the basement and crawls in after Anna. Thomas exits and the door closes in front of Anna. The creatures control Thomas and Anna's bodies, repeating the moment of the woman who told them the story of her husband whose head was pressed into his body. It all went away, no one was hurt. Thomas and Anna run outside and ask where her husband's body is. She answers that he is in the barn. There are several bodies there. Anna tells him about each one and how they died. He photographs the bodies and Anna as well. Examining the other's bodies, he finds blast wave marks, saying they are not human scars. It turns out that the ghosts create wind, and wind is the same blast wave, the ghosts killed everyone. Thomas realizes that the ghosts wanted to tell him something because they didn't kill him and Anna. He sets up a phonograph and records their voice and photo. When they get home and process Anna's photo, they see that there are many ghosts standing behind her, and an image emerges from the water and screams. The lights go out and the door swings open. Having set traps and cameras for the night, they stay the night in the stable. Anna brings dinner, Thomas tells his story of death and return, and Anna tells hers how her aunt regretted that she revived it out at birth, because this can't do that. One of the boys of the village leaves the house at night, holding onto the thread to keep him from being dragged away by the shadows. The thread begins to shake and the mask flies away. The lights in the village go out. Thomas and Anna hear someone running on the roof, a bell goes off. All the bells ring, 
Anna says they are here. At this time the boy's thread breaks and he begins to run away and scream at the top of his voice. Thomas's flashbulb goes off in the stable and shadows can be seen on the ceilings. The woman goes outside and there stands the boy. He is dragged away by the something and holding back the woman. It begins to bash the boy against the door while a shadow climbs under Thomas and Anna's cart. Anna falls off the cart and the priest opens his mouth. Thomas begins to be pulled into the stable and the boy is still pulled through the village. Suddenly there is a lull, a fire in the streets. Thomas and Anna go outside to see if there are any traces Thomas, who finds nothing, asks Anna to wait outside while he goes to get his camera. Entering the barn all the corpses took positions, Anna ran at him and disappeared, and the real one came in behind him. In the morning, Anna and Thomas listen to the phonograph, but find nothing. Thomas goes to show the pictures, he immediately shouts that the pictures are there and that he is going to show them. Anna touches the phonograph and discovers a wicked laugh. Thomas shows Anna the pictures with the ghosts, and Anna shows the phonograph and says that it must be slowed down. There is a voice talking very fast. They are knocked on the door and Anna tells everything they know and have seen to clarify the situation to the townspeople. Looking through pictures of the city from the tower, they see a black trail that leads to Anna's house. Thomas sees blood on the door, so he flips the photo over and follows the trail. When he arrives at the house, he knocks but no one answers, so he goes inside. The walls are poured with water and a dead family is sitting at the table. The villagers who come and blame Thomas for everything, for he has angered the spirits. Outside, the ghosts begin dragging the main man and drag him to Anna's house. His aunt begins to shake. Something hit him against the wall and there is a stain through which shadows take him and water runs down the walls. People run out into the street in a panic. There is chaos in the village, a dark cloud thickens over the church. People gather together and pray, and they begin to be lifted into the sky and killed. Anna's aunt strangely moves to Tomas, and a dead boy comes out of the house. Anna's aunt attacks Thomas and asks him to bury her. Everyone runs into the church and the boy follows them. The clouds have thickened to complete darkness. As they approach the church, the boy stops, soars into the air, points his finger at Thomas, and falls. In the church Thomas asks where Anna is. The doors of the church open and there is Anna. He runs out of the church to look for her and sees that Anna and her aunt are gone. He runs to Anna's house and finds only his aunt lying in bed as if with demons inside. He runs off to look for Anna. The peasants close to Thomas and Anna come out of the church to look for them. Thomas finds Anna flying over the bodies in the stable. He runs after her and asks the peasants to bring the bodies. If they take the souls of the bodies, the shadows will go away. Anna is dragged to Theta, and the peasants drag all the bodies to Anna's house. House begins to go underground. Thomas carries Anna out, but he does not make it himself. An unknown man from above sets fire to the house, and inside, all the walls are doused with water. Bodies that have not had time to get into the house begin to burn. They stand up, burning, screaming. Thomas is flooded and dives in. Underwater he is attacked by Anna's aunt. He dives out to get some air, but she drags him underwater again. His aunt says he will go with them and he drowns. Thomas finds himself in an empty room, where he walks through the next rooms and finds bodies. And Marxa decides to go down the chimney after Thomas. A shadow crawls after Thomas through the ceiling. In a long hallway he meets an aunt who hastily runs at him and disappears. Bodies in the rooms begin to rise. The resident finds Thomas, ties a rope around his legs and he is dragged out. While Thomas is lifted to the light by Anna and the shadows in the afterlife, he is awakened by Anna in the real world. Thomas sees Anna again, as after the explosion in the war, and he comes to his senses. The running bodies fall and the shadows evaporate into the sky. The next morning Thomas is about to leave, and Anna runs out after him. As they arrive at the cross of the village on the mountain, they hear screams from the neighboring village. Thomas asks have you been there? No. And together they go to the neighboring village to rescue the inhabitants. Support the channel by subscribing, like and turn on notifications. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.